Y'all picked a very interesting day, in fact, a wonderful day for a baptism. The day we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming upon the church. Just like the Holy Spirit will be coming into this place, that's already here, but will be coming to make a special appearance today for Walker Joseph to welcome him into God's family through the power of the Holy Spirit and the sacrament of baptism. I asked you as I was reading today, um, Acts, and the story of the tongues of fire and the mighty rushing wind, what went through your mind, or what were you thinking when you heard that story? Is there a little bit of skepticism? I mean, a little bit of, did it really happen that way? I mean, this is the year 2022. I can't blame you, I suppose, for having a little bit of skepticism or wondering, did it really go down like that? Um, it's 2022. Maybe God was a little more busy back then. I don't want to say God's older, but maybe God is a little bit older now and just doesn't do things the way that God used to do them. I wouldn't say God's getting lazy. Maybe it's us. I don't know. But they were riding around on donkeys, right? And they had sandals, and they were all kind of primitive back then. So maybe God did things back then that God doesn't really do right now. After all, it is 2022. Since, what, the 1400s or 1300s, we have advances in mathematics and astronomy and science and medical and chemical and biological advances that have come along. I mean, what do we really think about when we hear this mighty rushing wind and the tongues of fire and everything? Maybe a little bit of skepticism. It seems like these days, and I think it's a real tragedy, it's a real loss, too that we don't believe in things the way perhaps we used to. Back then, the earth was the center of the universe. All knowledge emanated from the Bible, and if you wanted to know what was what, you went to the priest who was at the church. No longer. No longer. And again, I think that's there's a, there's a bit of a loss in that. Uh, we've lost our ability to embrace mystery, I think. And now with social wars, well, I mean, let's be honest. The young people aren't going to church the way they used to. And part of it is because mom and dad can crack the whip, but you know what? Kids don't really care that much anymore. We're mobile. We're moving around. And then we tell stories like this, and people, young people kind of go, well, yeah, I'm not really so sure. So what do we do with a story like this? A violent wind blowing from heaven, really? Tongues of fire? And in a stunning reversal of the Tower of Babel, where language separated everybody, now the members of one tribe, all speaking in different languages, really? I think it's easy to say, couldn't have happened really like that. This is a metaphorical story. What really happened is we slowly had an integration of theology and Jesus' method of the way that slowly emanated throughout the diaspora and around the Middle East and around Africa, right? I don't believe so. I still believe. I still believe something like this happened. I believe that something happened in that room that was so miraculous and so amazing that it was like tongues of fire were on top of these dudes' heads and they were talking in different languages. I still believe it. I still believe it. One of my seminary professors said, it's great to get real smart about God, Charlie, but don't get too smart. Yeah, as a clergy person, you've got to have some general knowledge. But some of these professors around here, they get so smart about God that they start listening to their own press instead of looking in the Bible, believing in the power of prayer and miracles in the Holy Spirit. And you know what? I have two master, he said, not me. I have two master's degrees and two doctorates. And I believe in the resurrection and I believe in Pentecost Sunday. And for me, I do believe in Pentecost Sunday. I believe in this story and I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit coming into this place and upon each and every one of you. I think for me, this means a couple of things. I have to be willing to trust in the power of the Holy Spirit. Call it what you want these days. If you gravitate towards Hinduism or Buddhism, you want to call it third eye. I'm okay with that. I'm comfortable with that. But it's this innate power from a higher being 
that comes into your life, I feel like I have to trust it and trust that it is good. I have to believe in the transformative power of the Holy Spirit. I have to ask God for the Holy Spirit to come into my life. And when the Holy Spirit does come into my life, in ways that manifest itself in unbelievable fashion, I have to have the patience and the humility, not only to accept it as a gift, but to recognize it in the first place. Has anything like this ever happened to you? And a lot of times we chalk some of these things up to synchronicity or ESP or an upset stomach. <laughs> Maybe you've had some similar experiences. As a child, as a child, I got off of the city bus in Jacksonville, Florida. I guess times were different back then because I was like seven years old riding the city bus. But I get off the city bus and I'm walking back down to the back of the bus, you know, where you come to the back and you're going to cross the street. And the lady in the car right behind the bus was my first grade teacher, Mrs. Smoke. And she went like this. And I thought that meant go ahead and cross the street. And I started to walk without looking out to cross the street. And I still remember this. I'm 57 now. This was when I was seven. I still remember a voice that said, run. And I just ran across the street. And I'll never forget the sound of, Rrr! of brakes of a tan station wagon, literally skidding it and fishtailing almost right into me. <coughs> was that just a coincidence? Was that just a coincidence? Or was that the power of the Holy Spirit? I call it the power of the Holy Spirit. I didn't recognize it at seven years old. As I've gotten older and more and more of these things have happened to me in my life, I start to recognize it as the power of the Holy Spirit. This uh, one season, I would call it, as I was in Washington, D.C. as an intelligence officer, I was going through a terrible time in my personal life. Uh, being in the intelligence community was not stimulating anymore. I was living in an Air Force hotel where half the time the boiler would go off in the middle of the night. And I would wake up in the morning, and you know those coffee makers you have in cheap hotels that make like three, really, they say four cups of coffee, but it's really like one. <laughs> Little tiny pots. I would heat up water in that thing and pour it onto a washcloth and sponge bath before putting on a Navy uniform and going to work. It was miserable. And the heat would be off because it was an old steam-powered heater in this old Air Force officer's hotel. And I remember I just went into this real season of depression and decline. And I was sitting out in the courtyard, had some laundry going in the machine or whatever, and I was just sitting there looking at these dreary Air Force red brick buildings with the green metal roofs and feeling sorry for myself. And all of a sudden, I can't explain it, but a red-breasted robin flew past and made a song. And it lifted everything off of my shoulders and out of my spirit. And as for some reason, I was able to face the issues and the problems and the things that were depressing me from that day forward, I have no idea why the song of a bird flying past totally reversed my outlook on life, but I call that the power of the Holy Spirit. Think about me being here in Parma. You know, John Hartman gave me a call when I was in Washington, D.C. and said, what do we gotta do to get you to Parma? And I, I, I thought, Parma, Italy? <laughs> Arma? And then I said, no, I'm really not interested. And then he started calling my wife. <laughs> and my wife says she heard a word. And she said, get your rear end on a plane and go up and meet these folks. They sound nice. And my life trajectory and plans completely changed through a power that I have no control over, that I can't, I can't control, I can only recognize. And I can only accept as a gift. Today, as the Holy Spirit, through the sacrament of baptism, comes into Walker's life, as God personally 
sacramentally welcomes Walker into this family. Let's be grateful for the Holy Spirit. Let's believe in these old stories. Let's keep them alive. Let's tell them to each other again and again, every Sunday, every year, and make them part of our joy. Amen. Amen.